Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Run It Back. And I'm joined by Matt Berkey. We're going to dive deep into some high stakes poker action. But first of all, Matt, how are things going? I know you're streaming. I know Poker Out Loud is there right behind you. Uh, you must be staying busy during the quarantine. Yeah, busier than I could have ever expected, to be honest. Um, I feel like I'm working like 60 hour weeks all of a sudden when I was complaining about working 60 hour weeks prior to the quarantine. So it hasn't been uh, a whole lot of taking much time off playing a lot of online poker, which, you know, good and bad to it. Uh, but the live streaming has been fun. It's been a new challenge. It's It's been an interesting avenue to explore. Yeah, definitely. For the people who want to watch Matt play on a regular basis, Solve for Why on YouTube, please subscribe to that channel. Give those guys some likes. And also, while you're at it, while you're watching us, give us a like, give us a subscription to this uh, YouTube channel as well. We're going to do this every single week. I'm going to try to bring the coolest guests on the show. And of course, you know, Matt Berkey is a great one to start with here on YouTube. Um, we have a lot going on. All the action that we're watching today is from High Stakes Poker. And the first four seasons of High Stakes Poker are now available on Poker Go. We are releasing a new season every Monday, so we're going to have all seven of, uh, of those seasons on the site pretty quickly. So if you do want to enjoy more of that action, please make sure to do so. Um, uh, Matt, uh, Matt uh, High Stakes Poker, I'm going I'm to roll the intro. And, and while we do that, of course, um, uh, how, do, how do you sort of look back on this era? Were you sort of really involved as a fan back in these days? Um, I, you know, I, I wasn't the type to set my DVR for it. Um, but it was one of those things where it was always on in the background. This, this was happening during an era where online was a big boomer. Uh, so I was playing, you know, a lot of nightly tournaments and things along those lines, uh, as well as a lot of live cash on, on the side. So I obviously look back at this time very fondly. Uh, this was in my mind, what it meant to make it in poker. Absolutely. Well, this is uh, some of the moments from the previous episode that we're not going to watch, but let, let's listen in to sort of get a little bit of a taste. Booyah! Oh, the, the intro music is always perfect, by the way. I feel it's, like... It's hype. It's for sure It's hype. It's really hype. The song, I think, is awesome. Yeah. They did a great job of just showcasing all the glitches and glamour. Like, bricks of cash, armed guards... And everyone looks so young. Yes. Crazy Daisy. I'm all in. All right, while um, uh, Gabe Kaplan and AJ Benza introduced the, li the lineup and the action, a uh, shout out to their uh, bow ties as well for this uh, wonderful occasion. Um, this action that we're about to see today, for the people who at home who've never seen this before, this is one of the wildest episodes of season four. We have Jamie Gold, Gila Liberté, Doyle Brunson, Antonio Esfandiari, Negreanu shows up a bit later. Uh, we have Sammy Farhai in the mix. And in general, um, we're going to see some amazing, amazing, huge pots. So um, I, I don't know. It's hard to even explain. I was watching this yesterday doing my preparations. The amount of physical cash on the table. If you guys are watching this and want to take some guesses at the, the physical cash on this table, please make sure to let us know in the chat um, how much physical ca cash there's actually in play. Um, Matt, just for reference point, what's the biggest stakes you've ever played yourself? Uh, 1K, 2K, 4K was the biggest I ever played with the occasional 8K straddle. And how much physical cash was on the table? Zero. It's very sad. <laughs> I, I miss the days of cash playing for sure. Okay. Let's, let's all, as a group, get aroused by the amount of cash on the table right here. Like the action is just getting started. I'm going to crank up the volume and, um, and let's just see what this uh, first hand is all about. You said well, and then you didn't I'm say anything. Well, because I just remember Jamie Gold going down. through that ordeal. That guy just basically handed you still the hurts. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, if three spades come out there, we might see <laughs> another ordeal here. <laughs> between Sammy and Jamie. While, while we're watching this, did you have any, any favorites yourself watching poker as, as a fan? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I went through the natural progression where I obviously was a big fan of Doyle out of the gate because of Super System. Um, I grew into a fan of Greenstein because of it, it was a little bit arrogant, but like he had his own website where he would rate the players uh, that he played with. And I found that to be fascinating for a couple of reasons. One, as a spectator, I wanted to know uh, a professional's opinion of everybody. But two, also just as a competitor, that's like the most audacious thing you could possibly do, which I, I had a little bit of respect for. He also had like the computer science background, which I could relate to. 
Yeah, no, definitely. Greenstein definitely was one of the main stays on, on High Stakes Poker. Someone that was involved in every single season, all seven of them, along with Negranu, uh, Doyle Brunson, and I believe Antonio Sfandiari. Um, and uh, in this hand, full house here. Or a quad, sorry. Barry's got quads now. Barry's not checking anymore. Now he bets 30,000. I think I let you get there. I call. I got a straight. I let you get there, right? I knew it. I knew it. Ah. He was not going to fold anyway. Oh, you you man. want to fold? No, I can't say if I got to set her fold. I'm not folding. You save money, James. All right. You save money, I guess. Not like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, knew you had it. I mean, Jamie Gold is a character in a whole different league. This was sort of at the peak of his sort of fame, I want to say, like yeah. right, right after winning the main event, playing on high stakes poker, playing super loose, playing a ton of big pots, just a lot of crazy stuff happening. Look at the cash that Barry has there. It's like can barely even keep track of it. Um, have you ever played against Jamie? Uh, yeah, we used to play this uh, 510... 20 to 50 straddle on the button game at the Tropicana. Um, <laughs> it was weird. It was like right around the time that I went broke. That's how I met Bob Bright as well. Uh, we used to play in this game every Tuesday. And it was organized by a guy in town named Hollis. Uh, and we would get some wild games. Brad Booth would play in that game. Uh, Jamie Gold, David Williams. Uh, it was it was a really, really big game for it being such small stakes. And uh, to say it was entertaining would be probably selling it short <laughs> yeah i think that these these episodes are a good sort of example of how crazy fun poker can be when no one really seems to care about the money at all and and nowadays i feel like those games where no one cares anymore those are really never going to make it on tv because it's it's, right. it's it's turned into a very private scene right well not only that but i think the the general viewing audience is so critical of that now if this lineup came together now People would complain that it wasn't professional enough, that, um, you know, it's a joke. How spot like imagine a guy like David Benjamin in this lineup and Antonio uh, and probably even Greenstein to some degree are super splashy as they should be. Right. Like look at the lineup. There are infinite fun players available. Right. But when you put that sort of telecast out now for the world to see, they want to see mastery. They want to see people who can stack up against a computer program and hold their own. So, you know, whenever you see guys splashing around with suited two gappers, uh, I don't think the general viewing audience believes that to be what quote unquote professionals would do. Right. So what's your opinion on that as far as a viewer goes? Do you want to be entertained more so? Or are you also looking to watch like only like the top, top players? Um, both, but I take each with a grain of salt. Like I think one of the best viewing experiences of the past year was Rob's home game on on Poker Go. It was a blast. I mean, like, it was it was what you see actually going on in the private scene. Like, I said that that was the closest uh, transition from the game that I played in Ivy's room to actual TV. Whereas usually whenever you get these guys together, there just isn't somebody who's willing to put themselves out on the line whenever the cameras are rolling. Uh, but the high level stuff's great too. It's fascinating to watch a super high roller bowl play down to the final two or three uh, and see elite level play take place in every single decision. Absolutely. Yeah. For the people who are watching right now, don't forget to like the video, like this video, but also let us know what do you prefer? Do you like seeing like the top top pl players play the most GTO style possible, and you, like you might get to learn from that, or do you prefer prefer Sammy Farha, Gila Liberté, and Jamie Gold just splashing around as if you know money was growing on trees? Because that's sort of what it feels like every now and then. Uh, because I have a clear, clear preference, and we're we're looking at it right now. This is my yeah. preference. This is the action that I love to see because it is so. I mean, I'm not going to say that high stakes players are predictable, but this this is unpredictable to a level where you, you never know what's going to happen uh, when someone looks at their cards. It could go any sort of way, and I think this episode is going to prove that. So, um, this is this is just I mean, it's just mind blowing stuff. What? What are the actual blinds? It's hard to keep up because I'm never sure who's straddling or not. So this is a four. Oh, this is a 400, 800 game with a 500 K okay. minimum buy-in. Okay. Okay. So the standard five X here from, uh, from Antonio, no big deal. I, hey, I'm with it, man. I was five Xing up until about a year and a half ago when people finally started to adjust. Aren't you a big time limper? No, nah, only in tournaments. Um, the only reason I limp in tournaments is just to control stacks because you have so much less playability. And I think I have an edge post-flop. 
Uh, but in cash games, there's really no reason to. Right. All right, so this is once again a pot that goes multi-way to the turn. Let's see if anything comes from this. <laughs> there's going to be an explosion. Got to be. Starts out with 10,000. Doyle's got the king high flush draw here. Don't see the big papa playing this. He might have if he had the ace high flush draw. But now it's back to Mr. Sammy. This just isn't a thing, Sammy's man. Gonna just find out what's happening in this hand. Hey, Sammy Incredible. Also, why? Oh, he has a straight flush. I'm sorry. I was like, why is he 100 percent? That makes way more sense. Decided to look crazy. Check the flush, and he just comes a deuce. Just a blank card. Oh, you, oh, I see. You made a play with the deuce, right? <laughs> I'm not forgotten. I, I cannot tell you how great twice. what David Benjamin is doing now is. This is <laughs> he's not only convinced Sammy's, but he's convinced <laughs> everybody at the table that, that Sammy probably has the yeah. best hand. Yeah. yeah. They can barely put their arms anywhere. There's so much cash. Right. <laughs> Jean Paul Belmondo and Les Miserables. <laughs> oh, this this deserves a French you. Academy Award. I raise you for a reason. Well, let's let's pause it here for a second, and, and people okay. in the, people in the chat, let us know what you think Benjamin Benjamin should do here. He has a mortal lock on this hand, but he's also playing against Sammy Farah. So Matt, let me ask you: In Benjamin's shoes, is this the moment because the stacks are so deep? Um, let's assume they're, they're both they both have 500k in front of them. This this is this is the point where to really go ham on the turn and make it like I don't know 140. I mean the thing is is that uh, he shouldn't expect a set or a straight to ever raise. Although he is like kind of saying out loud, oh I get it, you have five four, you made a straight with the deuce. Uh, that's why I said this isn't a thing. Like first of all, for a straight flush to lead there, <laughs> it's just like how do you ever get action? You got the king of clubs and the jack of clubs to fold behind you. Like this lead should get punished. <laughs> but then on top of it, somehow a set raises. Um, it does become one of those things where against a profile like Faha, Farha, even though um, he's maybe capable of bluffing, I don't think it matters. I think that like when he's raising for value, he just loses way, way, way more money when you stick in a re-raise here. Yeah, I, I feel as though th there's probably so much history between these two players in particular that they have like, you know, Tons of sort of things to, to sort of think about more so than just like, oh, this is Sammy Farhad. Like they, they probably, right. they might, they might have exchanged millions of dollars in like the days prior to this. So he's probably been outplayed uh, and that right now he's beat. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I think David's probably thinking anything that Farha raises for value. Um, he would probably just call in the river. He's just trying to figure out how much to raise. But, uh, 75 yeah, more. I, I think this is very smart. He snap calls, obviously. Now, two things sure. are going on with Sammy. One is ego is hurt dead. a little bit that he was fooled. And secondly, he wants to figure right, out if it's go. worth it to him to call. And he's decided already that it is. All right. Good luck. Good luck, Jamie. The problem here is that Sammy knows that he's drawing. So now I don't think he thinks at any point a set is best. So getting paid on the river is going to be a little bit of a challenge for Benjamin. Right. I'm out. Ah, sit like this. Actually, I'd have, uh, Sammy yeah. hopes the board pairs, and it would be the worst possible thing if the board pairs for Sammy. Sammy got lucky. Don't bet. You can't get money out of me. <laughs> Let's see how much David bets. David probably feels that Sammy, by calling the 75000 has something like the jack high flush. There's 250 in the middle also. Let, let's let's just keep that in mind. 250 yeah. in the middle is just an, it's just already like a massive pot. Sammy gives the dealer an ingratiating <laughs> stare like thank you very much. And David bets 250,000 which I think is way too much. Yeah, I agree with Gabe. Way too much. like I've seen that face before, didn't I? The thing is though like he thinks he's against a flush. Right, right, right. He did, he did call it. Benjamin said, you have, did you have deuces on the turn? Straight yeah. Flush. David straight turns flush. over the straight flush. Oh, my God. <laughs> By oh showing God. his hand there, <laughs> he alleviates any animosity pairs, yeah, his performance might have caused. Yeah. What a flop. <laughs> so I got to tell you, Gabe was the best. For, for somebody who, like, you know, he's not going to step in the ring right now and just speak the way Shulman does in a very – calculated manner hedging the two worlds between gto and live play and you know psychology and math and stuff like that he was really phenomenal 
at just recognizing the utter uh, moment, I guess, Absolutely. where it's just like there is some meta involved here, and uh, what Benjamin's doing is turning it to a negative for himself. Right, right, right. Uh, Jamie Gold, by the way, is trying to leave this game. He says he has to go to, to a meeting or something. Uh, he's, he plays his last hand, I believe, seven times, and then he, play, then he pays the big blind again, and then I think he plays a couple more hands, which is really sure. funny. But it's sort of a theme on this episode where Jamie wants to play blind and, and, and have some fun with these last few hands that he's playing. Uh, but it also makes the game super, super loose and crazy. Um, this hand is, is also absolutely crazy. So let's just watch and you know commentate as you, as you wish. Me, Gold, and Foundation. Three, four, seven on the flop. Actually, this is not the hand. I has got the best hand here with a pair of sevens. I was thinking of a different hand, but He's let's let's see where this goes buster. anyway. Okay. Checks it. So this was straddled to twelve, and then went limp, complete check. He calls. If Jamie finds a call here. Oh my and god. For some <laughs> mysterious reason, <laughs> Jamie calls. <laughs> I can see that. You explain uh, it well oh, there. I uh, just gambling. I'll get back to you that level on later on. Uh, he makes a straight. Check. Yeah, that's more important. Jamie should have bluffed the turn. It's a good spot for him to just lead. And Antonio knows that Guy or Jamie could easily have a straight here, so he checks. Jack on the river. Makes Jamie a pair of jacks. <laughs> oh, man, how's he going to lose money here? Guy bets 12,000. And now Jamie might call. It's a really scary board. What? I was going to. Yeah. How rich were these Jamie guys? Jamie calls 12,000 with a pair of jacks. How rich? Wow. Super, super, super rich. Nice hand. Well, one of them's legitimately rich, and he just won the pot. Magic jack. Send me 12,000. So let me, let me ask you this about playing super high stakes. How much... Um, uh, prop betting and gambling and seeing blind flops and you know doing crazy stuff that's definitely not uh, plus EV is actually happening in these games where it's pretty obvious that some people are also there just to gamble. Not to this degree. Um, people try to have fun in a more fair way now, I think. Uh, so there's a lot of like sleeper straddling that takes place. Um, there'll be a lot of like off the table bets, be it on UFC fights or um an argument being settled through a bet or or whatever the case may be um outside of straddling though i, I don't really think that there's a whole lot that takes place cold hands happen always at the end of sessions uh it's just kind of like inevitable somebody's gonna be stuck enough where maybe they'll lay juice even on flipping ozzy matt was notorious for this where he would flip uh laying six to five it, that's just, just total a, DJ. That's just absolutely crazy and insane. Uh, for the people in the chat, let us know if you have any questions or let me know if you have any questions for Matt. We can definitely take questions as we are watching this action all together. Uh, and also, please uh, give me some guesses on how much physical cash is on the table. Uh, the over-under number has to be absolutely enormous. Uh, this hand, we got a Svendiari with the suited connectors. I feel like suited connectors back in the day, you just you want to see a flop every single time, especially when you watch back these old episodes. People are just you know throwing stacks in the middle to see a flop with suited connectors. Yeah, yeah, the old aces crackers. <laughs> uh, you can blame Brunson for that one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Everybody else at this table would have called fifty and hurt more yeah. in that position sure. with the nine ten of hearts. Ace five eight on the flop. Ooh, wow. Antonio way ahead of his time, just recognizing the suit connectors go down in value when everybody else is flashing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jamie's flopped an open end straight. Which is funny because you know even myself, some just a recreational player, I would always overplay them even more so in multi-way hands because you're like, oh, now the price is right for me to go see a flop. Right, right. Except the reality is that you're dominated more frequently. Right. Yeah, but who who likes reality anyway? Like, no, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, flick it in. Exactly. Jamie raises to 40,000. You ever going to make a pair, Doyle? Raising draws. Love it. <laughs> Poor Doyle. How much you playing? He's bucking ace, queen, so pre, little, like, that's a trouble hand. And I think a player who's as smart and as savvy as David Benjamin knows exactly what Jamie has right here. Uh -huh. 75 more? 
can, can you yeah. can you have give some context on on how good or or I guess how successful Benjamin was back in the day because I feel like the new generation who now watches you and, and watches Solve for Why might have already forgotten about Benjamin because he's not really been you know at the forefront of the scene for a while. I mean, yeah, it's weird because uh, you know guys like him are just natural talents. He would get eaten alive in today's no limit climate. There's just no doubt about it. But you can see how far ahead of this particular field he is. Uh, and I don't mean that in a sense of like he's so far down a rabbit hole that like he understands the equities better than them or, or anything of that nature. It's just he has a better feel for the environment, right? Like to recognize that Ace 10 suited here is a good spot to stack off for 200 big blinds <laughs> is. You know, it's it's being astute to the environment. It's being able to take on more risk than your counterparts. And in a lot of ways, that's just what won back then. And and also back then, people were raising the draws to get it in more, right. esp especially in this kind of lineup. Yeah, yeah. Just pumped to get it in at the two-to-one dog. And then, of course, the endless negotiating about how many Jamie times do we need twice. to run it. If Jamie loses both times, I think he's going to I'm quit. surprised Jamie ran it twice back then. I, I don't remember running it twice until, like, post-Black Friday, like 2012, maybe. Yeah, no, it was definitely happening uh, in these shows. Well, the most epic one that I remember, I think it was, wasn't it Robel against Antonius in Australia? Oh, yeah, the PLO hand. The PLO. They ran it four times. They ran it four times, and he, he lost all four. Robel was, like, 13%. When they got it in and somehow scooped all four, it was the most incredible thing on earth. It's perfect. It was so funny. Still needs a four or nine. There are six people in this game rooting for a four uh, or nine right now. Uh, Absolutely. Notre, Notre biggest Maybe Pappas. seven, including the dealer. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a chop. Oh and That's Notre Biggest Papas was right. He's right. That's a new year for me. See that, Patrick? I don't always lose it twice. Come on. <laughs> Uh, people in the chat wondering, let's hear some Aussie Matt stories. Have you played a lot against him? Yeah, yeah, I've played a fair amount of hours against Matt. He's, uh, he's a very special individual. Um, it, it's, it's very strange. He's capable of playing high-level elite poker, and then he's also capable of being the absolute spot in a lineup. Uh, I've never seen somebody more driven by their mood than, than Aussie Matt. And, like, he has some serious, serious gamble in him whenever he's in the mood to do so. Right. Yeah, no, he's he's definitely a character. I mean, I think we've all heard stories over the years of him just going on crazy long, like, you know, 24 hours of just playing three-handed and heads up and stuff like that. Have you ever gotten sucked into one of those games? Uh, yeah, all the time. I ended up playing him heads up uh, for two days straight where uh, we ended up playing heads up PLO, which I don't really, I'm not very good at PLO by any stretch. And we started at 500-500 and then we bumped it up to 501K. I, we were both stuck from having played the big game prior. Uh, I came in minus 250 and left plus 1.6 million. And then uh, the following day, I played him again, and he was calm, cool, and collected and played lights out and ended up beating me for a million. So it was just like wow, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I, I mean, he's very capable of being good, but he's also very capable of just like seeing red and just dusting off every penny in front of him. That's abs Those numbers are incredible. Like when you, when you win 1.6 million in a session – and, and I know you, you know you do this for a living, so you're trying to always win more money. But isn't there a thing in your head that goes, well, maybe maybe just like, I don't know, slow it down with the stakes for a while. Maybe, I don't know, uh, invest some of this money and just uh, take it off the table. I mean, it's not mine. So right. uh, I, I want it for my backing group. And though, yeah, we were like uh, a million uh, in abundance. We were, we were over makeup or whatever. But my whole job is just to find plus EV spots and keep putting myself in them over and over again. So yeah. Uh, honestly, it was what the most unfortunate thing was, is I was loaning him money because he just, he was cash strapped. He just didn't have it on him. Uh, and it was a Sunday. So he's like, you know, just let, lend to me and I'll get it back to you as soon as the bank's open. No problem. Um, and I only had so much of a leash, so I could only loan him 1.5. And like, after that, it was, he, I remember busting his last buy and he goes, I don't suppose you're going to loan me another 200, are you? And I was just like, I can't, but like. I would have kept loaning him 200 at a time until I passed out from exhaustion. I mean, it, it would have taken a serious miracle with the state of mind that he was in to really put it. He never doubled up once. We were playing 501K and he literally never doubled once. Wow.
I mean, that's just insane. Um, at that point, are you also sort of, I don't know, a little bit worried about, you know, I mean, it's Matt Kirk, yeah. he's, he's well known. I mean, there's, but there's still a ton of money to sort of loan out to someone. Yeah, I mean, that's why that there are these stipulations in place. It's like, uh, you know, you, you get people to vouch for him. And, uh, you know, I, I took some of the risk on from the backer side because they were okay with it, but they have their limitations. I'm obviously at risk myself and I, I'm very restricted to what I can offer in that situation. So it was definitely one of those things where it's like, I have to walk away from a good spot because uh, if he just never paid me, we're all ruined. I mean, yeah, that's that's a very good point. For the people just tuning in, this is Run It Back with Matt Berkey. We are watching High Stakes Poker, which is now available on Poker Go. We are li reliving some of these moments. We're breaking some of these hands down. And most of all, we are just enjoying it. While we're both probably drinking some water, feel free to open up a beverage. It's Thursday night in most places in the world, middle of the night if you're in Europe. Um, yeah, we're, we're having some fun with this. There are some absolutely insane hands coming up uh, on this episode that we are watching right now. And, uh, you know, just love to hear from you guys in the chat. Please like the video and uh, let us know how you think. We do this every single week, same time, Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, this week we picked uh, a, a special session of high stakes poker action with Berkey, who actually is not even someone who lived through this back in the day. So some of these hands are going to be brand new for him. And this hand that we're watching right now is, is one of those moments that's just probably a, a showing of the time that this was played in. Uh, let's, let's just enjoy the clash between Guy and Doyle Brunson. Lots of money going in here. Will Jamie call when it gets back to him with a Jack Seven offsuit? What do you think? The guy's got a foot out the door and. What do you think, bro, Matt? Every, uh, every hand is five way. It's so I impressive. I can't miss this. It might be my last hand. <laughs> here we go. I'm surprised. Yeah. In the pot. But again, you're better yeah. at yeah. making well, these calls sure. than I am. Poker community is well worth. So they're playing. I think I remember this pot. There's 400, 800. There's 60k in the middle. They're five. They're five way to the flop. Sure. Standard. Flop me something really. good to go out on. Let me go broke on the last hand. Ace jack four on the flop. Well, he has flopped a pair of jacks, but he's surrounded by aces. <laughs> aces to the right of him, aces to the left of him. And a better jack in the middle. And Dole's playing his hand real fast. He bets 40,000 here. Wow, that is a huge bet. How is Farah calling? <laughs> uh, even he'll think better. Yeah, of it. it's Doyle. I mean, and like... Sammy did the Lebanese chip dance and then <laughs> threw his hand away. Doyle has like the worst hand he would ever and bet. He's here, got aces, but he's got to be aware that Doyle has not raised too much before the flop. But doesn't matter. He's called with his ace five. 137 in the middle, guys, if you're keeping track at home. He needs a five to take the lead here. Two of diamonds on the turn. Two of diamonds is a dangerous card. It gives Guy an inside straight draw, but it gives Doyle the nut flush draw. Oh, Guy checks and Doyle bets 110,000 here. That's a pretty strong bet. Yeah. I think Guy might have called something like. I don't think I've ever seen a billionaire uncomfortable. 70, 110. <laughs> don't think he's going to call. Hi, Ray. Ten minutes ago. You just sure. said raise. Just when sure. I said he wasn't going to call, he said raise. I do remember this right. hit. I was right. He wasn't going to call. He wasn't going to call at all. 200,000. 200 more. Guy is trying to make Doyle throw away ace queen, ace king. And Doyle doesn't look like he's in any mood to throw it away. No. I mean, I would be putting Guy on a big hand here. Unreal. Just called on the flop. 30,500 more. Must have to go, eh? Doyle's yeah. going all in for 30,500 more. How lucrative was poker Man. 10 years ago? I mean, Guy beats absolutely nothing here. Wow. He has a draw. Man, <laughs> and we're now looking at the biggest pot in the history of high stakes poker. 818,000. shocked. When they see the hands that oh, these two you. guys have. <laughs> what do you got? Ace, Look at Doyle. Oh, with the yeah. diamonds. He's got outs. Okay. He's got outs. <laughs> you want to show your hand? You want to see mine? Okay. You can, can, hold on. you can deal once or twice. That's why he's asking. No, he doesn't, run it, he doesn't run it twice. Oh, whoa. <laughs> when you have Jamie Gold's like, shocked and surprised, then you know it's, it's an insane hand. Yeah. More than once. 
So you, you're allowed oh, to you decide. Oh, you just knock and run it once. It's up to you. No, it, it's up to you. Believe me, I'm not going to decide that. <laughs> you, have the you have the advantage there. The biggest <laughs> hand <laughs> so in the history of high stakes poker. Twice, most right? money in the okay. center of the I'm table on two very mediocre hands. Look at Doyle. But I've sat here all day and hadn't made a pair. Three or five. And you catch. You got a hand at the door making that call. He did have the nut flush draw, but it was a hell of a call. And it was a hell of a play by Gee. Yeah. Four, all four. Four, you split it. There's a queen. One more. One for Doyle. Gee needs a three or five that's not a diamond. Give us a face card. Well, a three will be perfect. Oh. Uh, ten will do it. Right, I won one. <laughs> I won one. I won one. He's been winning hands for 75 years. Yeah. Shaking hands with a guy who just get handed you 400k is is just really funny. Um, that was a spectacular gift. And 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 of course, you know, to look at Guy still has probably half a million in front of him right now. Like he probably yeah. had a lot more. Look look at the look at the train of cash that that is in front of Doyle right now. Like How is, amazing, man. They don't have to go to the cage. They can just go right to their box. <laughs> it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Wow. It's crazy. This, I mean, Guy, Guy doesn't really play anymore, right? Have you seen him in Vegas at all in the last couple of years? Uh, to my knowledge, he plays. I heard that uh, he'll like have a private game in Hawaii uh, from time to time. But yeah, he doesn't play publicly. I don't think he's... I've never seen him in a Vegas casino. Right, right, right. Um, all right, Jamie Gold's still trying to leave. He's uh, standing up, still playing his last hand a few more times. Um, I think this hand is getting played blind between Jamie Gold and Sammy Farha, at least uh, pre-flop, which you know is very normal back in those days. Um, while we're watching this hand unfold, which you know isn't isn't all that crazy, um, what have you been up to, Matt? Give us a little bit of a breakdown of of what you've been doing on the channel and and with Solve for Why. Uh, yeah. So I guess um, you know we're kind of preparing for the worst whenever it comes to uh, social distancing and live poker kind of being put on the back burner for a little while. Uh, so we're, we're just taking a different direction with our content creation. I'm doing a lot more live streaming. Uh, we're going to reduce the uh, subscription price for Software TV down to $9 a month. Uh, the idea behind that is instead of us putting out content that's highly produced every single day, we're just going to do um, more bare bones stuff once a week so something in the neighborhood of like uh, a weekly webinar or uh perhaps like a session review of my own um you know things that will still provide a lot of value to our community but won't require us to have full-blown production and uh you know running it at full scale like we had been right 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 so for people who are watching solve for why on youtube is definitely a good starting point for that you are streaming tonight is that what's happening yeah i think so um i'm gonna hop in there it's been a long day already, but uh, I, I'm jonesing. I'm going to play some tournaments, uh, jump in, play the nightly schedule on WSOP and see what happens. Awesome, awesome. Well, it's, it's going to be hard to um, uh, get adjusted again to playing, you know, smaller stakes after looking at this this I know. bunch of mayhem. This really gives me nostalgia. Like, I am so, so sorely missing playing, like, super high stakes uh, live poker. Right. I mean, is, is that something that you would – jump into right again when this is all over are you still mostly focused for yourself on high stakes cash yeah ideally that's that's the um big emphasis i want to have for my own personal playing career but uh it is one of those things where i don't really have the luxury of just being able to play what i want when i want i do have to sell action uh and it becomes challenging when you're talking about cash games where uh it's not as simple as just having all the tracking and tournaments and stuff so uh, tournaments are much lower hanging fruit, but um, I can play pretty much everything up to 50, 100 anytime I want. And then anything for like one, two or bigger, I just sell a little bit of my action. Right, right, right. Well, if this game ever returns, High Stakes Poker, of course, is now on Poker Go. We are working around the clock. Brent Hank's taking the lead on that, on bringing High Stakes Poker back for a new season. Is this, is this at the top of your list? Are you knocking on Brent's door to get in the game? Are we going to be able to have cash on the table? Yes. I, th I think that would be the determining factor. If like, you know, seeing those bricks get pushed to you is so much more impressive than like a pot full of flags. 
exactly i think i think the chips just feel like chips and everyone has played with chips before but no one yeah. like i've like i mean this this is not a brag by any means but the most i've ever had at the table is 1200 and 500 of that were 500 dollars bills and mm -hmm. i and i was like afraid to bet those like that how felt, many times did you count them throughout the session oh, the whole time they yeah. were like they were like behind my stack and i'm just yep. like looking at them the entire time yeah yeah, yeah. that's yeah the the disconnect between betting chips and real cash is very necessary to be good at this game, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't feel quite as real for sure. Yeah, definitely. And 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 I think these guys to some extent have that also, where yeah. if you're putting the brick in or if you have to take the the rubber bands off a brick, it you know it's getting real. No matter how right. rich you are, it it just feels different. I mean, I mean, this is just a casual 10K snap call, bottom pair. It's good. <laughs> Hold on. Listen, to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back a few seconds because this call is pretty epic. And what Benjamin says, what Benjamin says in this clip, and if, you, if you're watching at home, please pay attention to what he says and how he says it, goes to show how much these guys probably play with each other and how well he knows Jamie's game. So I'm just going to go back a little bit here to this river decision. Bag call? Yeah. <laughs> Not much. That's 10 grand, Jamie. That's what. That's about what I would call not more. I got nothing. I got. I got the nuts. I mean. For real? Yeah. Lewis. That's the dude. That's the nuts. <laughs> nice hand. Okay, <laughs> I'm out. Nice hand. I never, I never flop a pair. So when I have that, I feel like I have the nuts. Nice playing with you, Doctor Gold. Hey, it's great playing with everyone. Uh, Jamie here. is really leaving. Is it, is it true? I don't know. He's not out the door yet. Right. Let's see. I mean, how much money did he have? Ten like, million is not that much money. No, but he he definitely was just gun guns blazing, like not holding back at all. It's just incredible to watch. And Benjamin, do you think that's history? Do you think that he just knows that that James Gold's range is any two cards at that point? Yeah, I mean at that point you just pay off the live one. You know, if he has it, he has it. Like it's it's good for the game. Like I, I don't know. I, I I think he might have caught him with King High in that same spot. All right, this is my favorite hand of all time, probably. Look at this King Queen of Diamonds. Oh, you don't think I knew I had the best hand, Doyle? I don't know. Say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was scared. You sleeping with the guy or what? I mean, Antonius <laughs> I was makes a play, play, raised the 16,000 with the jack nine of hearts. Maybe he could have had a 10. This hand and is ridiculous. Sammy and Doyle are Come talking on. about I like the three betting and non premium is Jamie Gold. The, the idea of making a play. A he had a 10 on the board. Surely, if he'd had a 10, he'd have bet it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You what? Don't know. He would have bet himself if he'd had a 10. No and Patrick, who's been kind of quiet. What? Has decided to make it 16,000 with a jack nine of hearts. Very interesting. <laughs> He's got position on <laughs> Sammy. Dog, Patrick. I know you're going to bet. I'll move in if I hit a pair or something. 639, two diamonds. Patrick flops top pair, and Sammy's got the king high flush draw. Sammy's check. Patrick bets 20,000. And we have a raise coming here. This feels real bad when you're in <laughs> Big raise. This hand is just ridiculous. It feels real bad, but like... It you're was never a very forward. large raise, and it was very fast. They're so deep. I'm all in. Wow. Patrick has gone all in with a pair of nine. And Sammy called. Patrick went all in, $482,000, and Sammy called immediately. He could just be against ace, deuce, and diamonds. Like. Hold on. The, look, okay, so there's a million dollars in the pot. We're $1,200 short of a million dollars. Listen to what they're talking about right now, because Antonius, when Sammy snap calls, is just... He almost shits, shits his pants. Like, that's yeah, that's literally course. the emotion. That he thinks he's representing, like, aces or kings. Right. And okay. Sammy might fold a hand, like, tens, jacks, or queens. Let, let's listen to this. This is my, one of my favorite moments in the whole show. All in, $482,000, and Sammy <laughs> called immediately. Hey. You have a big hand? You have a set? I don't have a, you have a, you have a set. No. <laughs> you don't have a set? You're, you're flushing? Very often, they no, go, you, you flush it, they end up asking if they have a pair. This is the, <laughs> this is the you the, got a pair. This is the biggest pot the in the history of high stakes poker. Right. Yeah, oh the, yeah. man, it's no wonder incredible. these guys all thought they would never go broke. Greenstein had to think he'd be a billionaire by now. I know, I know. And th this negotiation also goes to show because the first thing that's, that stands out is that Antonio is totally sort of tries to figure out Sammy's range here and he thinks he's, he's crushed. Yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. is King 
You tell me first, I'll I'll tell you second. Okay, we're gonna do business. We're gonna run it. Oh, we always do business, man. You, we might chop it if we look. We don't have to look. Just tell me what you have. I'll tell you what I have. I suggest you guys Two times? open the cards. Huh? Two times? Both players are a little superstitious, and they don't want to turn over their hand first. We'll if only Farhad that. knew he was have. a favorite. I know. I have, I have a weak hand. <laughs> you went all in. I have a weaker hand than you. No. But you're my customer. <laughs> I got to play with you. You don't call me with one second. <laughs> you got an ace That's map, Patrick. That's good. Uh, How do you know? He doesn't have ace high. He's got a pair of trees and a flush. I mean, th this is like a fucking sporting event. I gotta go back and, and just the, re the reaction on Patrick's face. I got a weaker hand when Sammy says that. Oh, yeah. weak hand. <laughs> you went all in. I have a weaker hand than you. No. But you're my customer. <laughs> yeah. I gotta play with you. You don't call me with one second. <laughs> you got an ace high, Patrick. That's good. <laughs> he's, got ace high. he's got a pair of trees and a flush roll. And he's got he two said no flush. flush he didn't have a flush. Yeah, she has a flush. Sure. No. Me? You, you didn't have flush. No. Oh my god. No. Oh, yeah. You crazy all in? <laughs> what do you think? I'm a, we're kids here? <laughs> oh, this is epic, not man. Playing solitaire, fellas. This oh, can yeah, never happen any longer because the worst player in the game still knows better than like what these two are discussing right now. Right. You know, they're trying to disguise their own information. <laughs> Bring us one more Patrick here. <laughs> Half a million on top. Come on, you turn your ask? hand over. I got aces, Loyal. What do you know? <laughs> I gotta tell you what I have. Oh, he has okay. yeah, Jack and a diamond. Okay. No, Jack queen a diamond. I got two over and a flush. Okay, so it's a flip. Four times? What two over? Can't tell the surprises. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two face cards. God, I love you guys. It's at 10 seconds. Who cares? Okay. This is our money. Not, I mean, okay. we're running a show. We're okay. paying for let's, it. Okay, let's run it four times. Am They're going right? to run it four ridiculous. times. We've four never times. seen that before either. Yeah. Why don't they just run the rest of the deck? Run it 15 <laughs> times. <laughs> oh, come on. Wow. This is just oh, insane. It's it is, it is a redraw. It's a redraw. Nine or a three. Wow, and Patrick <laughs> hey, hey, hey. is dead to a nine. <laughs> Quarter million dollar nine. Patrick wins Oh, it. my God. Let us know in the chat how you, how you <laughs> feel about this hit. Is this the most epic hand of all time? Let us know in the chat how you feel. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoy the content. We're doing this every week, but this is just out of this world, this hand. I get the feeling it's going to be split at the end. Uh, Don't you get that feeling? Yeah, well, yeah, what? yeah. After all this, Sammy still hasn't got a queen or a king yet. No diamond, no queen or king there. That's you, of course. Two for Patrick. I feel like Barha has been pretty unlucky thus far. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Have you ever ran it four times? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing memorable, though. I, I, I'm i pretty sure we just ended up with the split. Right. I mean, running it four times. Wow. No it, kings, no queens. Nope. Very unlucky. Big win. Okay. I'm not so, so happy anymore. <laughs> that was almost a dead even heat, boys, if y'all didn't know it. Half of whatever he has. Is, can you make four stacks with that? That's very close. That four stacks. As they say in the hood, Daniel Negrano is in the Hello, his house. Sir. How you doing? Did I miss anything? No. Nothing no. at all? <laughs> huh? It must have just been common to, to carry a, a, a chip box of, of cash. Just absolutely insane. Um, uh, all right, here he is. I know him pretty well nowadays because I played a lot with him, partly in Omaha. And, He's talking about uh, Sammy. He loves to talk and uh, he loves to do business and uh, we'll see. It's um, he's good for the game, good for the TV. Well, it sounds like I mean, Antonius is also just the straight up legend, like just fearless yeah. and just always ready to get it in there. Um, he's lucky he's pretty, or he would have never made it to television. <laughs> just, I mean, he's not exactly like the most charismatic guy, and he doesn't play a lot of hands, but. You know, he as far as like bucking the standard of what a poker player should look like, he's coming from like a totally different perspective. Right. How do you think guys like Antonius and I guess to us, I guess I guess Antonius, let's just stick with him. How do you think guys like that got so good during that time? Like what was what was studying like? I mean, there were books back then, but this is pre like coaching videos and stuff like that. Yeah. So any thoughts on that? Uh, personally, I've always equated playing shorthanded pot living Omaha to being a better post flop player. And I imagine that his experience with Omaha really helped him become a lot better of a no limit player. Now, 
it, it's not always going to be the case because when you're somebody like Sammy, who just has a ton of gamble in you, playing a game like Omaha just feeds that need. But Patrick seems very risk averse by nature. So to play a highly variant game like Omaha, um, I imagine he was just very critical and studious as far as like how the equities would run, where it's a good spot to get your money in versus, uh, you know, maybe playing a more conservative style. Let, let's just see how Sammy just doesn't get enough money here. Three queens and Guy just called. Wow. Get in. And a queen too. What was Guy afraid of? You didn't raise it? That's how unlucky I am. <laughs> I didn't raise it with the queen. So he stacks off 400k with ace five, and then he doesn't go busto with three of a kind queens against Sammy Farha of all people. I mean, Sammy lost more money in this hand than he did against Patrick because he yeah. should have doubled up, right? Yeah, for sure. Not even close. But it's also nice that the very next hand that you play, you just get to win another hundred thousand. Yeah, it's true. They're playing three six twelve. By the way, I said four hundred eight hundred earlier. That's a mistake. Three six twelve, and then of course, still making these huge raises before the flop. How much is how much is Guy's watch worth? I couldn't even begin to guess. Half a million, probably. Oh man, that might be cheap for him. <laughs> He's so rich. We we are watching season four of High Stakes Poker. For the people watching right now, this is all available on Poker Go. The first four seasons are on Poker Go. New season coming out every single Monday. So stay tuned for much more of that as we try to take you through the quarantine. I mean, we're all just watching poker. That's all I do every day. And then um, on YouTube, we have this show every week on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content, and then we can have you with us here as next week. We might do more high-stakes poker. We might do poker after dark. We might do a WSOP final table. Depending on the guests, we're going to have some uh, some fun stuff out there. And once again, look at this. Um, unreal. This is wild. This is so wild. First time I put the straggle. This guy wakes up. He's not going to King, queen of clubs. Unbelievable. Like, it's so crazy that South Point chose black as their 5K color. And the funniest part is that there's almost no room on the screen to, to show all the cards. Yeah. Wow, I can't believe he folded King Queen suited. My question is, what is Barry going to do what a when genius. back to him? Is Barry How are you, slow play? The biggest gambler King. in the game, Barry, just finds a spot to fold King Queen suited pre. How much is it? So Antonio having aces is definitely part of Barry's thinking process here. I mean, uh, not to turn us into a, a coaching moment, but Esfandiari making a 73 there. Is is that making your range a bit too tight, especially against someone like Greenstein? Uh, I mean, the thing is, is that they're... Uh, okay, like, re-raising is, is fine, but Barry's raise is so, so big. Everybody limped for 1,200, and he makes it 24,000. A hand like two tens, it's just like it's middle of your range. You know, you can't, you can't really overplay it. Uh, and now you find yourself in this situation where, like, when you three bet fold, you you are effectively bluffing with what may be the best hand. When you call here, you're just always in pretty bad shape. It's not like he's ever gonna have nines. Right. And then in this spot, Barry always has it, right? I mean, he has to. To be all in here, he has to have like queens plus ace king, I think. So Jacks are in a boss, really tough spot, uh, I guess, but no matter what, he definitely doesn't have worse than tens. Right. What What's the worst hand you call here with? If I'm Antonio, yeah, I think queens. Wow. And I'm not happy about it. But I also may not even three bet queens for that exact reason. Like I think I might just like call with the vast majority of my range, with the exception of maybe kings exactly. Kings or aces, just to ensure that I get heads like up. Antonio is showboating. Looks like he's really thinking about this decision. 270 exactly. Antonio knows if Barry has a pair of sixes, sevens, eights, nines, he's a huge favorite. If Barry has jacks, queens, kings, or aces, he's a huge dog. What's so sick, too, is the dumbest, like, or the smartest call in my life. They're playing on such short rolls, for sure. Like, I don't know how much of themselves they had. Maybe all of it, maybe not. Um, but I would imagine that at that time, because they, because poker was so soft, because everybody was making money hand over fist, Antonio probably has like less than 10 million in net worth. And Greenstein as well. And it's like they're just risking 10% of that every time they sit in this game. And they play every episode for all however many seasons there were of it. 
And I imagine that at no point were any of their net worths over 10 million. Right. So it's like they might have had full exposure where every single time they sat, they had five to 10% of their net worth on the table. And you would do the same thing. Back then, I 100% would have. Uh, I mean, honestly, like, I remember when Jason Mercier got a seat at the table, uh, I had just like kind of been on the come up and I had like, I don't know, 300,000 to my name or so. And I was thinking to myself whether or not I would sit with all of it if I got the opportunity to. And I think that like, I wouldn't have been able to say no. Yeah, I, I think I think that's definitely a, a great way to sort of frame this era because people were just taking those big shots. And there, there's, there's the added value, I think, as well of this being the Booker Boom era and these guys being aware of the fact that becoming more famous and getting more access is also worth something. So if you yeah. if you lose half a million in a million dollar pot and you, you know, go viral, so to say, back in 06, 07, that must have had some value too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, almost all of these guys ended up signed with some site or another with the exception of Farha who legitimately probably had more money than most of the players at the table after getting second to Moneymaker and playing super nosebleed uh, underground PLO games and everything of that sort. 30 seconds. Fuck is fast. Fifteen seconds. <laughs> Just no respect for the risk. I mean, oh, like for sure Antonio, this might be case it. money. Uh, probably not, but like, I'm gonna switch the fifties, okay? Yeah, that was the right move. Took a long time, but it was the right move. So he finally does lay it down. Of course, great move by Antonio, saving himself a lot of money there. I, have to I swear to God, I thought they were good. What do you have, please? <laughs> Antonio's telling everybody he had tens for two reasons, I think. One, he wants to see if other people thought they might be good. And secondly, he's saying, hey, I'll play a marginal hand. So if you come over the top, I might call you. No, Kings, I would have called. He said, if ever you flop top tens of the flop, you win. Wow. All right, shout out to everyone really in the out. chat. Uh, let's take a few more questions. We've got a few minutes left here with Matt Berkey. We've got a few more hands left as well, as this is just tremendous poker action i mean if you've never watched this before and of course we're talking over it we're doing some questions right now go back go to poker go watch all this stuff in a row binge watch make popcorn have a have a drink or something because you'll be entertained for hours on end there's just so much going on and daniel legrand taking the seat of jamie gold here uh, later in this session uh, if you guys have questions for matt berkey by the way please do hit us up in the chat and don't forget to like this video if you enjoy what you're watching to limp and he's limped at the right time because Barry's got queens. Oh man, and Barry raises to seven. This is small ball. Nice. <laughs> Sammy might get involved. No, what happened to that thing? They're working on it. They're still working on it. These raises are so massive. <laughs> he might get involved, but it doesn't yes. matter. I mean, like when guys are calling seven thousand with eight six off, like they're just totally inelastic. The price you can make it anything, right. I really mean, nice spot for Daniel. That, that's what I used to feel like playing one two in my local game, where you had to raise the fourteen in order to get anyone to fold any hand. Like that's sort yeah. of what this plays like. But the buy-in is half a million dollars, and Daniel yeah. just made it thirty-two k, and Barry snapped it off with, uh, with the queen. Really good just call by Greenstein. Not only is he beaten some of the time by Negrano's limp raise range, but also at this point you want to compensate for the times that Negrano is aces or kings by letting Gee come in the pot. But he throws out twenty-five thousand like he has nothing, like it's a pro bet, and this might be working. Barry didn't want to see an ace or a king, but from the way Daniel, uh, I think he's just pulled. Very nice. It's really hard for Daniel. Negrano to be bluffing at this point. In Negrano's shoes, is it just easier to check? I mean, you're, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Is, is that me thinking? Level, I mean, he level limp one? raised, man. It's like, <laughs> you know, at that point, you're kind of throwing the rule book out. Like a limp raise should just be probably aces a lot of the time. And then right. it comes ace high. So it's like, if you're Greenstein, you should just be thankful that you maybe faded a cooler and he's C betting with Kings. So let's play hypothetical here. Um, what if uh, Daniel makes it, you know, 4k off the mm -hmm. bat. And then what does Greenstein three bet to in, in this environment, right? Let's, let's play the um, hypotheticals here. How do you think the action goes in that sense? I mean, judging by the way, the sizings have been working. He might go all the way up to like 20. Right. And then assuming it folds back to Negreanu, then he's going to be in a weird situation where he either wants to make it. I mean, the sizes were pretty out of control. So like he might make it like 75. Uh, he may just call. Um, 
you know, knowing Daniel's personality type, I think he might just like call in that situation to keep Barry on the hook. But uh, from what I can tell, there isn't a lot of three betting that takes place. So it tends to just be cooler hands whenever that, that occurs. Yeah. So is limping then terrible? Because people are playing so loose and there's quite a bit of three betting going on. You might as well just blast 4,000 in there. Uh, I mean, the problem is, is that an open raise isn't going to get three bet very often and you're going to go four or five ways a lot. So I actually think back then for sure, and this may apply to like splashy, loose live environments now, limping has a lot of value because you get to close the action, like specifically when you limp in early position. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. A uh, question in the chat from Mike Chan, and th this is something I'm really interested in too. What was Berkey playing back during when this was happening? So this is 2000 and let, let's just call it 2007. Okay. Uh, so 2007, I was playing 510 mostly. Um, Salamanca, New York, as well as uh, Seneca, Niagara. So Niagara Falls a lot. And then I would play underground games uh, up to 1020 in Pittsburgh. Wow. So you were already like making, making some headway there. I mean, there was a lot of money to make between 2003 and 2010. Yeah, that's a good point. So when did you actually start playing, I guess, you know, seriously? What, what year was that? Uh, 2004, my senior year of college, I, was, I probably blogged like around 500 hours live, wow. which considering I was an athlete and still going to school and getting my degree, uh, that was a lot of hours. And I was also playing a lot online too. Right. It, it's, it's so crazy to think that you've been in the game for like 16 years, man. Like you're, you're, yeah. you're a vet. You're, you're, you're like, you're, you're still a fairly young, but you're, you're a veteran of the game at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've, uh, I feel like I've seen it all. Like I've been toward back. It's, it's crazy. And, uh, and yet you still, even though you started playing in 04, still missed out on people handing you $400,000 in a, in the single cash game. I mean, that's, that's the thing, right? It's like whoever got to scale up their career fastest was kind of the benefactor. Gelfon was playing in these games. No shock that he's one of the wealthiest in our community now. Same with Robel. Um, there was a handful of guys who were just early adopters where they were beating online for a huge number. You know, that was never me. I was always very slow to scale because live was really my environment. And it was a tough trajectory to get from 5'5 five, five or 5'10 all the way up to uh, 300, 600 or whatever the case may be. But for guys like Galfon who started multi-tabling 2550, guys like Robo who started being high stakes sit and goes and then 2550 plus and stuff like that, they made seven figures at a very, very young age. I didn't make seven figures until 2013. Yeah, that's nuts. So if you were to go back in time, would you say I should have tried harder at online or was that just not something for you? I didn't. I mean, I would like to say that, yeah, in hindsight, if I could go back and talk to a younger myself, younger self, it would be, hey, change your trajectory and and put an emphasis on the game differently. But uh, I don't know that my success would have been better. Um, uh, or maybe it would have just been different. Uh, I just think I'm cut from kind of a different cloth. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't have been able to find the path online. I wouldn't have been able to become a little bit more analytical and a little less, uh, I guess, meta-driven. But uh you know, uh, I'd be richer now. I don't know that I'd be happier. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, that's an interesting way to look at it. And of course, we're just playing hypotheticals. Um, while we were talking, uh, pot developing here, Guy and uh, Benjamin going, uh, I don't know, butting heads in a pretty significant way. Benjamin has the nut flush draw, which is basically the nuts in this game. Let's be real. Yeah, you gotta be sure. aware that Guy has to have a big hand here. He is not making this move with king, queen, or even ace, king. Did somebody fold clubs? Is that why Benjamin's percentages are lower? Could be. Um, what What I want to know from you at this point is the fact that running it twice or even four times is so common in this game. Mm -hmm. it, is is that a big thing of your thought process when you're Benjamin and you're looking to rip in a flush draw for a million dollars? It shouldn't matter one bit. Um, if you get it in behind and get called, then... You know, whether you run it once, twice, or 25 times, you're only getting back 38, 40% of that pot share. Well, here we go. He made it 600K. Wow. This is insane. Think about it, eh? Benjamin looks sick. Oh, man, his face. <laughs> That's the man who knows he's about to get called. Oh, my God. 
And also for the people watching at home, Guy Le Liberté can do whatever he wants. He can throw, his, he can take a mm -hmm. shirt off. No one would even care. What he just did was he is still thinking he hasn't called yet. Six hundred thousand dollar raise from from uh, Benjamin. He shows his cards and he says, "What do you think?" And and Benjamin is trying to like his hardest to not give away anything. He has got a call here. What's and he afraid kind of? Open that maybe he had a He's a billionaire. The guy has pocket threes. Possibly good for him. No, it's good. I'm glad. No, it's, no, no, no. It's, this is good for me. <laughs> He's just saying in the tournament you can't. Uh, set. Listen, I have to go. I call. And he calls. <laughs> oh boy. What time do you want to do David it? is not time. happy. <laughs> One time. Uh, guys, let's look at the number in the top left corner. Yes, it does indeed say 1.2 million. Okay. Well, we now have the biggest pot in the history of high stakes poker, $1.2 million in change. Wow. And Guy said, I want to run it once. The three biggest pots this of all time. The new all happen here. Oh. No, it's not the same. Yes. You said that, Come Barry. on, Barry. I'll take Listen in. One of ten. You know, I can bet either hand. Just want to gamble. Right? Just want to gamble. I'll bet on the and, and Guy just wants to run it once, just so everyone's aware. Just so, one uh, time. I'll put a hundred thousand on Sunday. Don, which hand do you want? I'll take a hand. I take your hand any day. Huh? I take your hand. Four. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? It's for you. I, I don't care. You know, I know it's a lot of money no, for fine. you. It's fine. You no, said no, one time. No, <laughs> listen, I, I David. Have, I don't object. I just want to. I, I just want to say one thing. Yeah. It's probably more important that put than it is for me. So I just want to let you make yeah, a decision. I, you know you what? Choose, you choose. I don't know. Okay, is this classy or is this almost out of line? No, it's classy. Okay. Uh, it, it may not come off that way. It may sound a little bit demeaning, but I think he's being very heartfelt. And this is something that personally I've experienced playing those leads where uh, you get shown a little bit of grace when it's very clear that this pot could potentially strain your ability to play moving forward. Um, I'm not, you said one, one? You choose one and two. That's it. He's telling you. You know, nice. uh, that's nice. This is him having too much pride. One he should he instantly lying. say twice. Right. It's a lot of money. But nobody wanted to be thought of as a coward. Nobody wanted to be no, judged be by their funny. net worth. I hope it doesn't represent my life this far. I hope, I hope this is also probably a, a good reflection as to why Benjamin struggled so much and has gone broke so many times. Well, did you hear what he just said? He said, yeah. I, I hope this is not for my life. Right, right, right. So he's looking at the cash, trying to figure out and, and thinking about how much of a piece he has of himself. And this might actually be case money. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't or, be or, here today. Or there's another proposition. We'll just play for the putt, which is there. Wow. Wow. That I can't say no. <laughs> He's just saying, let's I play for the 168,000 each. That's a huge that break for nice David team. Benjamin. I, I have to agree with that. Huh? Or I'll, 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 I'll just take that. I don't know. What, what, what do you want to do? I know I'm, I'm favorite. I know I'm very favorite, so I'll make you a deal. I'll take the pot and forget it. The middle pot here? Yeah, this I take and you forget. Okay. Can I get my money back, at least? Now he's saying he'll <laughs> take the... Oh, he takes the middle? Huh? Good. 70,000 or so that's in the pot, 43 of that. Yeah, no, 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 I agree. We don't want to see Can I see? I'll never see. tell a soul. I'll never tell a soul. Please, I want to see. I've never won one of the spots, so I'm not no, missing no. any card. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, no card. No card. card. I won't tell anybody. No, we both no, don't want to see it. We can look at it. This is madness. This is. Give me the cards. Give me the cards. Fair enough. You got some equity. Okay, just to summarize what happened there, Guy proposed a variety of things to save Benjamin's life. The first thing was, can we run it multiple times? Benjamin said, no, you said once, so we'll do it once, being very prideful, like Matt said. And then he said, how will we play for, the, for what's in the middle? And Benjamin said, of course, I can't say no to that. And then Guy said, what if I just take the pot? <laughs> take what's in the middle. And yeah. Benjamin said, yeah, just take it. And then, of course, they didn't want to see any cards because... You know, even though at that point it doesn't matter, you don't want to, you don't, you don't, you don't want to see a club on a turn there. Doyle's line's classic. He he was being serious. He goes to Guy. He goes, "You got some equity there." That's right. <laughs> you did. I mean, he won thirty percent more of that pot than he should have, or thirty-five oh. percent more of that pot than he should have. Oh my God! People are saying that I missed a funny line. I, I'm gonna go back a little bit because I don't think it hurts to to relive this moment again uh, as we wrap up the show. By the way, don't forget to like this video. We're almost at the end here. This is our final hand, so let's listen once again to this um, bit of negotiation. I don't want to keep this from you guys. Seventy 
thousand or so that's in the pot. Forty-three of that. Yeah, neither. No, 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 no. I agree. We don't want to see. Can I see? I'll never tell a soul. I'll never tell a soul. Please, please, I want to see. Won one of the spots, so I'm not missing any card. No card. No card. I won't tell No, we both don't want to see it. We can look at it. We can look at it. No, no, this is. This is. Give me the cards. Give me the cards. Fair enough. Yeah. You got some equity. Huh? You got some equity there. <laughs> uh, this is a huge break for David Benjamin. He just I lost 47,000 in the pot. He could have lost I mean, 600,000. You know, I would, I'd play, but if it has that. Yeah, I, had to bet. I, knew. Oh, I was putting know. either in flush draw or an ace king. Tough to make that call though, and then give him the money. You give him breaks huh? like that. No, I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, you give him like that. Huh? He, he said he doesn't he get breaks. I said he gave Jamie a hundred eighty thousand dollar break earlier. This is why it doesn't even bother me to do it once because I, I I'm sorry, I'm so much behind. <laughs> that was very nice of you. So do you think the other players are just happy for Benjamin? Are they thinking like, man, w what a lucky break? Why can I have that? Like, uh, what do you think the atmosphere is like at the table when this happens? I think the opposite. Uh, I think that they're very salty that they don't want Guy to take the worst of it. And I think they think that he took the worst of it. But uh, Guy just got to scoop a $130,000 pot uncontested or $120,000 pot uncontested. So by the equity standpoint, about 40000 of that is entitled to Benjamin's hand. So Benjamin's basically paying him forty k to buy out of gambling for the remaining five fifty. Um and, you know, that's not enough. Guy, if they did an equity chop, would have gotten uh, another, uh, whatever 17 times five is. Uh, so a, a little shy of 100K. Uh, so he was basically compensated half of what he should have been. Right. Absolutely ludicrous. Insane hand. Super, super crazy. For the people watching in the chat, um, <laughs> let me know which players you think could come together in 2020 to replicate some of this action. Of course, you know, Matt, I'm going to include you in that. I would love to have you as part of that game. Um, it's such unfair expectations, man, because the, the big issue is, and this is no shot against everybody who's played in these games, but nobody knew anything. Nobody. The best players in the world, they just didn't know anything. Listen to the banter back and forth with Negranu and uh, Antonius. All these guys, they were so in the dark. And we all were. I was in the dark then, too. Th this could never happen now. Never. <laughs> don't, the most... don't kill the dream yet. Don't kill uh, the dream yet. I mean, I'm just saying, like, you could pull the most amateur person off the street that plays nosebleeds, and they're still going to understand, like, that running it twice doesn't impact their outcome or that if they're doing business on that pot, they're entitled to X amount of dollars. I mean, that stuff just isn't lost on anybody anymore, so it's really, really hard for people to make such egregious decisions over and over and over again for hundreds of thousands. Well, if you are watching and if you have money to spare and if you want to play on High Stakes Poker, do get in touch because we are bringing High Stakes Poker back. The first four seasons are now available on Poker Go and each Monday we're releasing another season. So all seven will be on Poker Go in case you haven't had a chance to watch all of those. And I mean... I've watched it all like four or five times. Christian Soto was saying it in the chat earlier. He watched every single episode and he's still watching this. This like never gets old. I can watch this over and over again. Uh, Berkey, thank you so much for being on the show here with me. Uh, you guys watching at home, thanks so much for interacting with us in the chat. Also, if you're catching this at a later time on demand, let us know in the comments which players you want to see on the return of High Stakes Poker as well as which players would you like to join me on this show run it back every thursday night at 7 p.m eastern time we're going to watch high stakes poker poker after dark the world series of poker whatever i think is the most fun is going to be on this show so don't forget once again subscribe to this channel never miss any of the action and then i guess matt berkey uh solve for why that's the channel that they can watch you play on tonight yep gonna go live in 15 minutes all right live in 15 so switching over to solve for why uh, matt thanks once again for the uh for the commentary and also for the laughs because this was an epic, uh, epic show. Uh, you guys, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next week.